Hey y'all, my name's Olivia and I'm a junior. And um, today I'm gonna talk about worshiping the Lord every day and what that looks like. And so the verse that really like stuck with me when I was doing this is it's Romans 3, 21 through 26. And so recently I've been reading through Romans, studying Romans, and in Romans 3, I kind of like held here for a little bit just because I felt like it's a pretty good, it's very applicable to our lives. And so I felt pretty like, I don't know, a call to it. And then I went to church and um, it was up there, like these exact verses. And I was like, that's kind of weird. But basically Romans 3, 21 through 26 says, but now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been known to which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. So that's Romans 21 through 23, 21 through 26. And So I'm gonna give a little background on Romans because I feel like when studying, it's really important to like look at the context because that's like something that really helps me because it's easy to like go into it and like have the wrong mindset and like not know the context of like actually what was going on during the time. And so Romans is a letter written by Paul like a lot of the New Testament is, but it's one of his letters and it's to the church in Rome. And the church in Rome at the time was what we would call like good people, if you want to say it like that, like it's what we would call typical like Christians today. They were practicing the law, they were obeying the Lord's like commandments and stuff like that. And so this letter is from Paul while he was in Corinth. And so he had never been to Rome, but he really wanted to go there. But it's, he was in Corinth at the time. And if you don't know anything about Corinth, it's like, it's the place in First and Second Corinthians, and it was a mess. Like, anything that we consider, like, bad today, Corinth was worse. Like, Corinth was an absolute mess. And so First and Second Corinthians have a lot of different, like, a tone. It's, the tone's a lot different than it is in Romans. And so Romans was meant to recognize, like, the good works of those in Rome and to recognize that, oh, they are Christian, and they do believe, and they do feel this, but also that's not where it stops. You don't stop with the belief and the feeling, Paul kind of called them out in the way and was like, we are not a workspace faith. And so without faith, it's like neglect. And so felt this very applicable to us because growing up Christian, I mean, it's great, let's be honest. Like it's our greatest gift is growing up Christian. But at the same time, it can be a really big like downfall if that's where we stop. And so I want to ask you today, do you find yourself like falling into two, there are two traps I feel like we fall in like growing up Christian. And so one of them is checking the box. So, and the other is doing it because you feel like you should. And neither of these on their own are really typically bad things, but when you're, <laughs> okay, continue on. But when they're your whole purpose in studying, that's where it can start becoming like, I don't know, not like the issue, but like if your whole intention is just because you should, then you're not really achieving your relationship with God. And so first, checking off a box. So I come from a family that was really big on to-do lists. Every single day in quarantine, I wrote out a to-do list, like step by step by step. And my parents want us to check every single box to make sure we had done it. My family, like my dad's to-do list goes to the ground every single day. He is crazy about it. But so I come from a very much checking the box. And so when I grew up, it was really easy to just put, spend time with the Lord on that to-do list and check it off because I did it. I read the Bible or I went to church or something. I did something. So I got to check off the box. 
Um, but I think part of maturing and like growing up and really extending your faith is learning to find like a real relationship with the Lord. So like if that time is checking a box for you, then that's great. But it's your intention behind that. And my mom's really big on intention. Like we were growing up, if me and my sister got into a fight, she could care less how the fight happened. And she was more concerned about why we did it. She was much like, okay, if your heart wasn't in a bad place, yes, this wasn't the best action, but it's about your heart. And I think this is really like continued through my faith. And I was like, okay, let me check my heart. And so continuing on with that, I think we can compare a relationship with the Lord and like look at it like we look at a friend. So you have two types of friends. I mean, there's a lot of different categories of friends, but there's generally like two types. You have like a true friend, one that you actually invest time in, and then you have a distant friend. And so I know like with a distant friend, I might like talk to them a few times. I might hang out with them at school, maybe even grab coffee like every three months, something like that. But they typically like fade away. Whereas with a true friend, you like really invest your time and your life in them and you actually want them to be part of your life. And like you really wanna to grow together, learn together. And so I think oftentimes, especially growing up Christian, we, cre we treat God like a distant friend when honestly, why, like he is, should be your like truest friend. And so within this, like a distant friend, you know, they kind of just fade away over time. Maybe you know him for like a year at a time, but the difference is that the Lord will never stop trying with you. And so he's not like, he won't be, let himself be your distant friend. And so this is my favorite song currently. And it's actually like my top, I don't know, Apple Music came out with their like 23 replay. And I was really excited because it has all your like playlists or whatever. So that's why Apple Music is superior to Spotify. Hot take. Um, but yeah, but so this is my top song right now. But the line I want to highlight is it's I push you away, but still you won't let go. And this is just like really hits me because like you can push the Lord away like over and over and over and over again, and he won't stop. And like, I've seen this in my life continuously. Like I've been at my lowest point and he's way stronger than he is even like when I'm feeling good about it. So like he is always there. And so it's hard, we can't just keep pushing it away. And so we can go through the motions. We can check off a box on a list, but until we try to find a real relationship with the Lord, you're never gonna feel that satisfaction and that true like clarity in life. And so the next thing that we often fall into is spending time with the Lord because you should. And so I'm gonna preface this with saying like, this isn't really a bad thing. And sometimes it's like, because you should. Like you might feel this just because you need to. And like, if that's you and you just like, don't like have any other way, then maybe it's someone telling you, maybe you should spend some time with the Lord. But at the same time, why do we feel like we actually like should and why don't we like get to? I don't know. My mom's also really big on like the, if I'm like, I have to do this. She's like, no, you get to do that. She is that person. Like she wants you to make the most out of every single situation. So if I'm ever like, Ugh, I have to go walk the dog. She's like, no, you get to go walk the dog. And so I think this is how we le need to like approach our relationship with the Lord. Like it's not that we should spend time with the Lord. We actually just get to spend time with the Lord. And so 1 John 4, 9 through 10 said, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is a love, not that we loved God, that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. And I just love verses that remind us of God's love because it really is, it's all present, it's so abounding, it's the greatest love you'll ever find. Um, and so the fact that we get to experience that love is a gift we're given and like approaching it with the intention of like, oh, I should do this, like I really should. And instead of like, oh, I get to spend time with the Lord, he really wants me. Like he actually will seek you out. He truly loves and cares for us. So don't let it feel like it's an activity that you have to do. We should approach time with the Lord with an open heart, with open arms, because that's how he approaches us. 
And so, so now, like, this is what we've been talking about the last few weeks, is worshiping the Lord. So, like, what does that look like? I mean, it's whatever it looks like for you. And that is so vague and really hard to know, just, like, get told, because it's like, okay, great, that sounds great. Now we can worship the Lord every day. But really, that's true. It's about your intentions. It's about your heart. It's about how you approach the situation. It's not about what you do. It's about who you are and how you approach it with your heart open. And so just going into this, it can be anything. It can be sports. It can be music. It can be scripture. It can be Bible study. It can be pretty much anything you want it to be. It's just how you approach it with your heart. So keep your heart open towards the Lord. And... Oh. So finally, I'm going to let us out with this quote that was at my church also a few Sundays ago, um, because I feel like I love C.S. Lewis, and I love his words, and I feel like this kind of just summarizes everything. But as you read this, I'm going to pray us out, and just think about if you want to live your life satisfied by worldly things going through a checklist, or if you really want a relationship with God. So I'll say a quick prayer, and then we can have some time for worship. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for bringing us all here. I pray that you are able to reach someone today, and that um, you just are able to show everyone here your love that you've truly have for us.